So uh, hello, uh, everybody from Rethimno, from a warm Rethimno <laughs> now. Uh, you would wish uh, you'd be here so we could go out for, at Ikea after, uh, 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 after the lecture. Uh, but I'm afraid we're all in our offices. Uh, so <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the third lecture that uh, we are uh, co-organizing. Uh, and uh, this time it will be uh, Juliana Boysheva uh, from our institute. Um, uh, Juliana is uh, a Bulgarian scholar in the field of the history of Byzantine and post-Byzantine art. Uh, her uh, um, <laughs> academic uh, education in history of art uh, uh, took part in Russia at the Lomonosov University and in Bulgaria, in the, the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, uh, and where she worked also in the Institute uh, for Art Studies for, of the Bulgarian Academy for a number of years. Uh, she has received uh, many scholarships uh, in uh, various institutions at uh, Princeton, on Maison de Sciences de, des Hommes, uh, um, uh, University of Athens, uh, University of Ghent, uh, and uh, since her, uh, the completion of her um, PhD, she has been acquainted with Greek culture and Byzantine archaeology, and uh, she has uh, chosen Greece uh, to be living uh, since uh, 2007. Uh, she uh, speaks beautifully Greek uh, and many other languages, <coughs> uh, and we thank her very much for this. So uh, Boysheva has uh, 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 reoriented since 2011 her research in the field of study of Russian icons, and she has done a number of research projects like Russian icons in Greece, 15th to 20th century from our institute uh, during 2012, 2015. Uh, she has organized conferences and uh, uh, exhibitions and uh, the last one, which I was able to participate and see actually, uh, it was religious art from Russia to uh, Greece, a collaboration with Benaki Museum. And of course, uh, since 2018, we uh, were delighted uh, that she has uh, 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 received uh, a, a NERC co co uh, consolidator grant uh, with a host institution at uh, uh, Institute of Mediterranean Studies here and where she is uh, uh, one of our researchers. So, Juliana, to you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for the, the possibility to present uh, our project, uh, our project uh, <clears throat> to the academic uh, community of your university, Christine. And I think it's a very interesting uh, um, possibility for communication and exchange of, um, of experience. So, um, I will start with um, the presentation of my project. And the first, slide starts, the first slide is the project ID. So uh, the, founded, the founded by the ERC Consolidator Grant uh, uh, Raikon Trans project is hosted in the, in the Institute uh, of, for Mediterranean Studies and uh, is implemented with the cooperation with the Benaki Museum Athens. The 25 senior researchers of the team, experts in art history, history, philology, social anthropology, museology, and art conservation are leading scholars and promising junior researchers from 11 academic institutions, universities, and museum, it, museums <clears throat> in Greece, Serbia, Romania, and Russia. The 60, uh, 60 months duration of the project will be extended by six months due to the COVID pandemic. And um, the final date of our project uh, will be 31st of October, 2024. The total, the total budget of the project is uh, 1,940,767 1, euro. The Russian, the object of re, our research, the Russian religious artifacts, icons, liturgical utensils, veils, vestments, books, and objects of private, of private piety 
held in museums and church monastery or private collections in the Balkans and Eastern Mediterranean constitute a body of valuable art objects and important material evidence related to the historical development of the religious, political, cultural and artistic relations between Muscovy and the Russian Empire and the Orthodox population in the large region of the Southeastern Europe. In their long history, Russian religious artifact, artifacts transferred to the region acquires various interrelated religious, ideological, political, and aesthetic meanings, values, and uses. Their trans, despite the objects, come incessantly to the region for a long period of time through official gifts, acts of personal devotion of the Tsars, offerings sent, by, sent <clears throat> by Russian state and church authorities to the Balkan church or secular institutions, objects acquired through officially sanctioned arms collections missions, ZITIA, or as unofficial and private donations by Russian clergy or laity, or by represent representatives of Balkan peoples living in or trading with Russia, as well by pilgrimage and trade. They have been worshipped and used not only in public spaces, churches and monasteries, and monasteries, but have also entered the sphere in the sphere of private piety. Since the end, since the end of the 19th century, they have also become, become objects of art collections. In this new environment, the social functions of these artifacts went far beyond the intentions of their creators in their, of their, and patrons. In their long history, <coughs> their transfer to and moreover their reception in the Balkans is a significant and poorly studied component of the larger, larger cultural process of transformation of the artistic language and visual culture in the Balkans and its transmission from medieval to modern idioms. It is also a process reflecting the changing cultural and political relations between Russia and the Orthodox communities in the Ottoman Empire and its successor states in the Balkans over a long period of time. Raikon Trans studies them not Merely as, not merely as religious or artistic artifact, but as mediums of cultural transfer and political and ideological influence, which is interacted with and were, were appropriated by receiving societies. In this dynamic transfer, piety, propaganda and visual culture appear interwinked in historically unexplored and theoretically thought provoc provoking ways. Among them, icons are the most popular and widespread and can be found until now in church iconostasis and proskinitaria and also in many family authors in the region. Whether masterpieces of religious art or objects of mass production, the icons have generally have been considered as a trademark of Russia, the only existing Orthodox monarchy in the early modern world. One of the most illustrious manifestations of the aesthetic estimation of Russian icons is, at the end of the 18th century, is the inclusion of the icons from Moscow in the famous canon of hymns comprising many exceptional things, listing the most beautiful things in the world by Cesarios da Pontes, a major figure of the Greek Enlightenment. Existing literature assumes the Russian icons were welcomed in the Balkans, in the, uh, welcomed in Balkans. Indeed, they were venerated, assuming a central place in churches and private altars, and ex exerting significant influence on local artists. You can see the Patmos Monastery, the main icon of Stasis with three Russian icons. <coughs> And uh, some iconostasis from the region of Epirus uh, with 19th century Russian icons. Um, icons in um, proskenitaria. However, this would no, no, not our, the, uh, always the case. 
their style, iconography and inscriptions uh, coming from uh, <clears throat> coming from another cultural milieu, these objects could be interpreted differently and have not neglected by receiving society. Their style, iconography, and description. Juliana, I am sorry. Uh, try and uh, and have this your microphone near your okay because it it sort of goes up and down. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's okay. Yes, it's great. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, their style and iconography and inscriptions were frequently in dissonance with local tastes and traditions, and very often the inscriptions, as you can see, were translated or supplemented by Greek inscriptions. Or some inscriptions, were, some icons were made for Greece, and they have Greek, Greek language inscriptions, primary Greek inscriptions. Both Russian and uh, Western iconographic theme, themes transferred via Russia to the Balkans found a varying treatment, treatment, like, for example, the living cross received well in Romania and never, never worshipped in Greece. Applying the cultural transfer approach in combination with the recent theoretically challenging communication of art history with visual studies and social anthropology, <clears throat> Raikon Trines aims to map the phenomenon in its long history by identifying preserved objects in the region, follow the paths, and identify the mediums of, the, of this transfer, to analyze the moving factors of this process, and inquire into the aesthetic, ideological, political, and social factors that shape the context of the reception of Russian religious art objects in various social and cultural environments. To study, to study, analyze, and classify these objects according to their iconographic artistic particularities, and to investigate the influence of these transferred artifacts on the visual culture of the host society. Russian religious uh, art objects in the Balkans and the Eastern Mediterranean have not yet been the object of systematic research and synthesizing works on them are still lacking. However, their transfer through donations, offers of alms, or trade is a phenomenon that has not gone unnoticed in scientific literature. Relevant references can be found in the framework of two disciplinary traditions, early modern and modern history and art history, both of which, however, have neglected the reception of this object by the host societies. Scholarly for the former, Disciplinary tradition historians have referred to this phenomenon in the context of the relation between the Russian state and church in the Balkans and the Orthodox East from the fall of Constantinople to the beginning of the 20th century, and more specific, specifically with regard to the policy of patronage adopted by Russia toward, towards the Orthodox population of the Ottoman Empire. In particular, the donation of or sailing of icons, liturgical utensils, book and clothes for Orthodox churches and monasteries in the Balkans assumes an important place in the study of Russian church history as, as early as the, as the mid 19th century. Since then, this body of historiography has formed an adequate picture of the historical context in which this transfer developed. It also, it also amassed evidence on the objectives and mechanism of this transfer, especially for the period before the 19th century, focusing on the official donation direct from Russia to the Balkans and the Eastern Mediterranean. Still, Russian and Balkans historians disagree on the volume and the dynamics of the phenomenon, this being an outcome of both the difference in the source materials used and the particular national narratives in which this process is inscribed. Thus, thus Russian scholars tend to emphasize the dynamics of icon donations and transfer in the 17th century and only recently extend the inquiry to the later centuries, whereas, for instance, Greek scholars tend to emphasize the 18th, century, 18th and 19th century when Russia was involved in the Greek national liberation struggles. The rise of Russia's prestige in the Orthodox world after the fall of Constantinople and the emerg emergence of the doctrine uh, Moscow, the Third Rome, turned the Russian Tsar into a figure embodying the salvation and defense to orthodoxy, of Orthodoxy, to whom every Orthodox could theoretically petition for help and support. 
as early as the 16th century, the Russian Tsar and the higher clergy, clergy assumed such a prote protectionist role and began to send regular donations and offer arms to the Orthodox Christians of the Ottoman Empire. On the one hand, this spiritual protectionism led to the formation of the state-regulated, strictly hierarchical system for the distribution of alms to, to Greeks, Serbs, Moldavians, Valachians, or Bulgarians who went to Moscow to, to petition for help. According to this system, the rank of both the petitioner and the donor determinate not only the magnitude of the don donation in money, expensive force or jewelry, but also the quality of the church utensils, icons and liturgical books and the number of holy relics offered. On the other hand, church utensils or icons were sent to the Balkans first and foremost to Mount Athos for health and eternal peace of the souls as donation of Russian rulers. rulers. These donations were especially intensive in, peri in periods of dynastic or political conflicts. For example, uh, the number of donated Russian icons at Utensio to Mount Athos rose sharply in uh, uh, oh, <laughs> one. Uh, when Ivan the Fourth, Ivan the Terrible, was 15, expecting 1516. 15, 15, 15, I'm yeah. sorry, <laughs> uh, was expecting uh, the recognition of this royal uh, of his royal title by the Patriarch of Constantinople. Likewise, the same ruler made massive donations in memory of this tragic date of the tragic date of his son Ivan Ivanovich. Donation and support to the communities of Orthodox East and the Ottoman Empire were not, were not interrupted during the time of troubles. And uh, despite the political instability and the depending, uh, and depend deeping economic crisis in Russia. During this period, the Tsar of Moscow, Boris Godunov, is trying to strengthen the prestige of Moscow, capital of the only Orthodox state. He seeks the support of the Eastern Patriarchs and the clergy and offers them financial aid and rich gifts while they offer to Moscow a large number of miracle-working icons and holy relics. It is extremely interesting that in uh, 1603, a particular guidance specified the types of icons to be offered to Greek clerics and monks. According to this document, these icons had to reproduce common Christian themes, such as the Trinity, the Virgin with the Child, Christ, Christ, Pantocrator, or important Russian iconographic subjects and Russian saints. A great deal of donation of Russian icons, liturgical vestments, and church utensils were made by Greek priests or monks who lived in Moscow, the most outstanding example being Archbishop Arsenios of Felason. Arsenios was born uh, in Thessaly, but spent most of his life in Russia as a high-ranking cleric of the Russian church. He donated more than 15 icons and liturgical items and books to the monastery of Meteora, the Dosiko Monastery in Thessaly, the Tatarna Monastery in Britannia, in Mount Athos, Mount Sinai, and the Holy Lands. During the rule of Romanov dynasty, particularly in the period of Alexei Romanov, the relations between Russia and the Orthodox East became very intensive. Central to this development was the, was the exchange of church utensils, relic, and icons. Very important is also the role of and the use and and the use of relics and miraculous icons in the political relations between Russia and the Orthodox East and their symbolical impact on the geopolitical intentions of the government of Tsar Alexei Mikhailovich in the middle of the 17th century. The advance of Russia in the international scene after Peter the Great and its morning is mounting geopolitical aspiration in the East during the 18th century brought about considerable changes in the character of the above mentioned practices, previously based to a great extent on the principles of charity and religious piety, these practices evolved in the 18th century into organic features of a well-organized state-regulated system of cultural and political influence to the 
unredeemed Orthodox Christians of the Ottoman Empire. The Greek project of Catherine the Great and the Russian presence in the Mediterranean begin with the archipelago uh, expedition in conjunction with the Rush Turk and the Russian Tur R R R Rush Russia Turkish War in 1768-74, specifically with the military actions of the Russian fleet under the, under the command of the Count Alexei Orlov. During this period, a large series of important donations of ecclesia ecclesiastical objects and icons were offered by Catherine to churches of Greek, of Greek communities who supported financially the Russian fleet expedition in the Aegean during the Russia Ottoman War. Uh, at the Church of Holy Trinity in Livorno, in Porto Maun, in Menorca, in St. George of Venice, as well as to the regions occupied by the Russian uh, forces during the war and the formation of the Republic of Archipelago. The formation of the Archipelago Principality and the rise of Russia to the status of the official protector of the Orthodox population of the Ottoman Empire after, after the Treaty of Kyuchuka Energy created further openings for cultural influence and stimulated the influx of Russian icons and utensils to churches and monasteries in the region. Emblematic case we highl which uh, highlights the multifaceted religious, aesthetic and geopolitical dimensions of the, of the transfer as well, the evidence that in 1769, the Russian fleet, which reached the Eastern Mediterranean, brought, to, brought no less than 15 sets of icons and church utensils meant to equip the mosque, which will be stored in the churches. churches. Inaugurated by Catherine the Great, this practice was also fought, followed during the later Russia-Turkish wars in the Balkans, as testified by the icons from the Bulgarian Black Sea region. The same practice is testified in the Imbros and Samothraki Islands, according to the diaries of the Russian naval officer Vladimir Bronevsky during the military actions of the Russian Navy in the course of Russia-Turkish war. Um, 1806-1812, as well in the Kret in Retimno district, which was under Russian administration in, uh, in the end of the 19th century. Obviously, the Russian soldiers who, who participated in the Russia-Turkish Russia wars in the region had with them small icons or other religious objects used as presents to the local, or to the local Orthodox clergy and communities. Furthermore the, furthermore, the increasing influence of antagonistic religious propagandas in the East Catholic and Protestant from the year early 19th century onwards, the complex course of the Eastern um, question and the rise of the rival Balkan national, nationalism and the Russian pan during the 19th century created a fluid ideological and political environment in which the relation between politics and cultural patronage became more complex, but not less important and intensive. Another uh, channel of transfer of uh, icons uh, uh, to the region was the uh, is the long distance icon trade by Russian itinerant traders attested in the region for the first time in the eight and the end of the 18th century. Increased during the 19th century, as is shown by many documents in the Greek consular, consular correspondence in the, in, in the press, highlighting the activities of Russian icon trends in Ottoman Macedonia and Thrace. The Mount Athos Russian, Russian uh, style painting workshops provide from the mid 19th century an enormous production of painting or paper printed icons for trading for trading with churches, monasteries, and pilgrimage, pilgrimage centers. This large number of Russian-style icons circulating in the Balkans and the Aegean Islands reflect the great rise of Mount Antos icon painting workshops. Despite the relevant references to the phenomenon outlined in this brief description, the transfer of the Russian icons and religious art objects in the complex context of the tur turbulent transition of the region to modernity 
has not been adequately studied. There are still important questions to be answered concerning the historical context, the time dynamics, and last but not least, the, fra the framework of reception of these artifacts in the Balkans. Scholars from the second disciplinary tradition, the historians of art, have studied Russian religious art objects in collections kept in Balkans and Orthodox East, focusing predominantly in high quality of works, masterpieces of Russian art. Several recent works and important research in in initiatives mark a revival of interest to the Russian icons in the Orthodox East. In most cases, however, the inquiry does not transcend the iconographic and stylistic analysis of specific examples accompanied by general references on donors and mediums of transfer. Apart from these specialized works, a series of, a series of disconnected publications of Russian ecclesiastical art objects are contained in various albums of local art collections in the Balkans. Extremely valuable for the perspective of cultural transfer are a series of older and more recent publications by, by historians of art, focusing on the influence exerted by Russian icons painting to local painting schools in several Balkans countries, the Danubian principalities, Bulgaria and Serbia, not extending to Greece, true, though with minor exceptions concerning Malthathos. It is important to note their to not hear the strong consensus in the significant influence the influx of Russian icons had on local trad artistic traditions and tastes in the indicate, indicate, indicative is the chapter how paints icon the Muscovite, the Muscovite way in the manual of iconography and painting by Dionysius of Fournal. Despite, despite the existence of this literature, art historic and historical inquiries on the Russian icons in the Balkans and the Eastern Mediterranean have not led so far for synthesizing work or monograph that examines the various national, ca national cases or the region as a whole. Finally, we should note that there have been some remarkable exceptions to the general rule of poor communication between the fields of history and history of art in the case under study. Indic indic indicative is the work of the art historian Oleg Tarasov, who was shown how the increasing needs of religious propaganda inside and outside Russia fostered the emergence of an impressive proto-industrial production, production system in the region of Vladimir and Suzdal. Suzdal. The system involves many villages of the district, which produced annually thousands of thousands of cheap icons for export. By studying the sweet generous guild of Russian icon merchants, Ofenia, merchants people who followed in line itineraries in Russia and the Balkans offering icons produced according to particular local tastes. Tarasov transcended the traditional neglected Russian art history for these lower quality icons and highlighted the significance of trade as an important mechanism and part of icon transfer. The Icon Strand project aims to consolidate the new particular field of study, the transfer and reception of religious art from Russia and its multi and and its multidimensional impact, political, ideological, and aesthetic on the Balkans and the Eastern Mediterranean. For the first time, Raikon Trans will map the historical process of transfer and diffusion of Russian Raikon's art themes and models to the Balkans in its broad geographic and chronological scope. Transcending the existing approaches, the project will systematically construct a representative basis of data, art objects, written sources, records, oral testimonies, and bibliographical references, and document the phenomenon as a whole, its volume, dynamics, and different phases. It will furthermore identify, study, and introduce into the scientific discussion new artistic and historical material the analysis and interpretation of which will reveal the dimensions of this historical process and the artistic, artistic and social significance of the inter intercultural mobility of religious art objects from Russia to the Balkans during the long period from the, the 16th to the early 19th century. With its, with, its, uh, with its broad geographic reference and emphasis on reception, 
Ray Contreras will show for the first time the complexity and contradictions of the phenomenon. Joe specially selected in-depth case studies. The project will highlight the varying responses, both positive and negative, to the transfer of Russian religious art objects in different local and regional ethno-linguistic and confessional backgrounds and, change, and changing political settings through the region. Apart from the varying religious and political attitudes, attitudes informing in each case the reception of these artifacts in the various Balkan societies, this methodological strategy will also inquire into the importance of non-political aesthetic and economic factors pertaining the wider frameworks through addressing questions such as how important was the importance of Eastern to Western art in the reception of Russian icons in the Balkans. An important part of the icons was stylistically and iconographically Western. It is possible to trace popular non-official response to the advent of these object of, uh, objects of art, piety and propaganda informed by different aesthetic and economic concerns. In addition, how important was the international and interregional itinerary icon trade in shaping these, respo in shaping these responses. The close communication and cooperation of historians, philologists, and historians of, and historians of art will enhance the analytical potential, potential of Rikon Trans. It will enable an investigation based on fresh and abundant material of, of, of composite questions concerning the, the interrelation between artistic form, visual culture, personal piety, political and ecclesiastical propaganda and ideology. Research plan and methodology. We will achieve the above mentioned research objectives applying a combination of research methods from the disciplinary of history, history of art, oral history, social anthropology, visual studies, and Russian and Greek literature. The first step of the research will be the identification and collection of two types of evidence, textual and material, about the transfer of Russian ecclesiastical art in the Balkans aiming to construct a large and representative basis of evidence. On the one hand, textual evidence will be provided by extensive and systematic of bi bibliographic, bibliographic and archival research, which will examine selected bodies of types of material, ecclesiastical, state and private archival collections, travel logs, newspapers and journals in Russia, Greece, Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia and, and West Balkans. We will collect information relative to the paths and mediums of Russian religious art transfer in the Balkans. For example, Russian official donations of icons to monasteries and churches in the regions, missions of Balkan monks and clerics to Russia for art collections, Zitia, and various or or orders of Russian icons, maritime and inline trained in, Ru in Russian icons, acts of donation of Russian icons by emigrants from the region to their places of origin, etc. The project will also document publicly or privately expense expressed attitudes, aesthetic or ideological, towards these objects. On the other hand, material evidence, the Russian icons and other art objects held in churches, monasteries, etc., uh, will be identified and photographically reproduced through field research missions. These missions will also gather, gather oral testimonies on the ways by which these icons reached their final destinations and observing the attitudes of the people using them or being responsible for them. Local clergy and lay population, museum curators, employees, private collectors, etc. This type of evidence, oral, is particularly important for, important for the investigation not only of their first, but also of their second reception, uh, the current place of some of these objects in museum and private collections. The field research and data collection, data collection, icons and religious art objects will be carried out in selected places of the above mentioned uh, in the above uh, uh, of the above mentioned Balkan countries, large pilgrimage centers and important monasteries, important urban centers, regions under Russian, in Russian administration for a period of time, regions with intense commercial relations with Russia, 
regions with mixed Christian, Orthodox, and Catholic popul populations, and regions with mixed Slavic and non-Slavic Orthodox populations. The above mentioned selection reflects a twofold aim to produce a representative same sam sample of both the preserved objects and their transfer. Combined with textual evidence, the sample studied through the employment of both qualitative and quantitative methods is expected to render a clear general picture of the geography, dynamics, and the volume of this phenomenon in, in its various phases. And the focus on the particular regions and case studies will enable the research team to investigate more in depth, qualitatively and comparative, comparatively the complex interrelationships between piety, propaganda and visual culture in the long process of the transfer under study. Based on the art history groundwork, the quantitative analysis of the large sample of icons with the cross-examination of the above-mentioned above classification criteria will render, render important results on the volume and the spatial temporal distribution of particular types of Russian icons in the region. These results will point, among others, the regional preferences for iconographic themes and particular code codes, as well as the regi reg regional variations of the uses of Russian icons. Family icons, icons for church iconostasis and proskinetaria, icons for personal, personal devotion, etc. Com combined with the written historical evidence, Reference to above, the analysis of the preserved objects is expected to elucidate, elucidate important facets of the reception of the Russian icons in the region. Last but not least, the iconographic and stylistic analysis will be employed in, exam in examining the influence of Russian painting on local, on local schools of religious painting, as well more generally on visual culture in the region. In this respect, particular attention will be given to the transfer of Western European artistic influences to the region via modern, via modern style Russian religions paintings. Our team. Our team is situated in Retimno, Athens, Belgrade, Alba Iulia, Moscow, St. Saint, Saint Petersburg and St. Petersburg, and we have some um, independent scholars from Bulgaria and uh, from uh, Berlin and Iraklion, I'm sorry. The research team of uh, the Institute of, uh, for Mediterranean Studies is, uh, you, may, you may see our, photo our photographies and our names. Uh, so our um, responsibilities is um, the PI will devote 100% of his research effort to the project and will uh, coordinate uh, the project, direct and participate in fieldwork, fieldwork research in Bulgaria, supervise design and supervise the feeding of the database, lead study and analysis, organize and particip participate in workshops, etc. And uh, publish uh, one monograph, edit two volumes and uh, two scientific articles. Associate Professor uh, Panayotis Ioannou uh, is a um, professor in art history in the, the University, uh, University of Crete. Crete and, um, he uh, will um, study and analyze uh, collected data relating to the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, data, um, data provi pro provided, provided from theoretical writings or writings or religious, mostly ecclesi ecclesiastical art published uh, treatise in 19th century in Greece, after the foundation of the Greek state, from the scope of and the interpretation of the Muscovite Western style, pa uh, Western painting style. And he will supervising two and the MA thesis. The social anthropologist of the of our team uh, will study the Russian icons uh, in Kiklades during the 19th from the 19th century and uh, the Russian icons 
uh, owned by Pontic Greece, who came in northern Greece from Turkey in, 19, uh, in 1920s. And the comparison, comparison of these two different social and cultural environments will help us to understand the reception and the appropriation of the cycles and whose origin was foreign. Dr. Daria Lesh is, Lesh is the philologist of, and expert of Byzantine literature, culture, and Byzantine and Slavic geography, and her contribution and uh, her to the Rikon trans will be the particular is will be of particular importance due to the linguistic and paleographic peculiarities and difficulties of many of the sources. She will be in charge of the identification, study, translation, and publication of the numerous of and scientific publication of the numerous of inscription of the icons and art objects as um, regular data the data entry on the database. Dr. Sofia Kat Topi, the postdoctoral researcher of um, on art history, work in creates mainly Retimno Prefecture, an area which was occupied by Russian forces during the Cretan Auton autonomy period in the late 19th and early 20th century. And as a result of this, and due to their common orthodoxy close relations developed between Russian army officials and the bishop bishopric of Retimno facilitating the transfer of Russian ecclesi ecclesiastical items, items to Crete. Such items are found in churches and monasteries of the Retimno region, most of which have never been recorded and even be prized of the parishes and are unaware of their provenance. These eight items are mainly college sites, but also gospel covers, epitaphs, icons, etc. Dr. Tassos Kostopoulos, the postdoctoral researcher in history, is, uh, is working on the research on Russian cultural politis, politics in the Balkans region, in the region of Macedonia during the long 19th century. He is collecting large scale of primary and secondary sources on the topic and will compose a monograph. Very important uh, role for the smooth and the efficient implementation of RICON trans and the consolidation of this uh, very large international network of scholars working in the field. Um, key role plays the project coordinator, Katerina Stati, and the research assistant of the project, uh, Maria Frangopoulou. Very important. Um, and and Katerina and uh, Maria are ensuring communication between members of the research team and uh, they are in charge uh, with scientific administration of the project, database compiling, collecting data from for, co with collected data from IMS4 team and third parties partners, proofreading, text editing, supporting implementation of the traveling photo exhibition and the participation of the open research data pilot. Um, we have uh, also in our team and uh, five postgraduate students uh, from uh, University of Crete, and uh, once we have we have the the last um, the last year and one student from University of Athens, and they uh, supported the database feeding with data. Uh, it's very, I'm very glad that uh, one of, at least one of the students uh, decided to, uh, to, to prepare, to prepare a MA thesis, uh, his master thesis on the uh, subject of, Rush, of the project. And I think it's very, um, very uh, interesting. Other, um, uh, part of the fourth, uh, fourth um, participation in RICON Trans project is the Center for Cultural Informatics the, from the Institute of uh, Computer Sciences. And um, uh, the collected RICON Trans data will be managed and integrated in a CDOC conceptual reference model according to the contextual criteria related to the use history of their object, their movement and value. Up. The second uh, beneficiary of, the, our, of our project is the Menaki Museum uh, in uh, collaboration with Athens University. Uh, so the Benaki Museum teams will um, 
uh, restorate the Benaki Museum uh, collection of Russian artifacts, uh, organize an exhibition and uh, a workshop uh, concerning the technical and the, 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 the peculiarities of the restoration of these uh, artifacts. A very important is as well the organization of two MA seminars uh, by Prof. The Professor Anastasia Drandaki uh, in Athens University. Uh, the seminars uh, uh, with the participation of uh, right contra of uh, project, uh, project members. And uh, these MA seminars will be terminated by a student uh, international student conference. Our international, our um, first inter first uh, big, big the big international uh, partner is the uh, the Faculty of Philosophy in uh, of the Be University of Belgrade. The team uh, is uh, led by Professor uh, Nenat Makulevic, and uh, you may see uh, as well the um, the collaborators of the of Professor Makulevic, and uh, he, the Teodora Bradic will be the PhD student of uh, um, the first PhD on uh, uh, project topics. Uh, the Serbian team uh, will will cover the um, research missions in western uh, in the western Bal balkans and uh, in uh, Bel sarajevo belgrade podgorica uh, nikšić and Riazva, etc and special icons will be special attention will be paid to the russian icons in museum collections uh, the, in the serbian orthodox ch church in zagreb and the national museum in belgrade uh, so um, I will announce um, to, today uh, and our uh, second Rikon Transfer workshop will take place in Belgrade in September, I hope uh, live. And uh, at the moment we have 21 participations from, uh, from uh, uh, Romania, Serbia, Greece and Russia. And I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, this is our Romanian team. Uh, is uh, led uh, by Dr. Anna Dumitran from uh, director of the Mosaic Center at, um, uh, at the Alba Iulia uh, Museum of the Union in Transylvania. And uh, she's collaborated, she, he, uh, her collaborator is uh, Dumitrica Filip, art uh, research assistant of the project and art conservator. And uh, Dr. Cristina Kozokaro from, uh, from the uh, Institute of uh, Art Studies uh, of Art History in uh, uh, Bucharest. Uh, so the more important, um, um, uh, how to see the more important uh, um, offer to our project from a uh, contribution of uh, Anna Domitran is um, their, um, uh, the possibility uh, she, she, she provide to our to our project um, the possibility to publish our studies in mosaic on uh, journal and uh, the first uh, four uh, publication uh, came uh, are, are uh, published. Uh, this it was um, the first the um, we had, it, this is the um, uh, the papers presented in the first Rikon work, workshop uh, Rikon Trans uh, workshop in Retimno in two thousand nineteen. And uh, after all, we have uh, uh, our independent scholars, uh, Dr. Nicola Species from uh, Free University of Berlin, and uh, three uh, researchers from Bulgaria. Uh, the uh, Dr. Species will work. On on uh, um, data collection in Russian uh, archives in uh, concerning 18th uh, century uh, period, and uh, he he will provide a database um, editing of the database of the historical part of the database. The Bulgarian team will um, provide us um, the material uh, related to the transfer from uh, Bulgaria. And 
our Russian uh, colleagues. So we have uh, three art historians uh, um, collaborating, uh, Dr. Alexander Probrozhensky from the State Institute of Art Studies in Moscow, uh, Dr. Uh, Natalia Komashko in, from the Museum of uh, Old Russian Art in uh, uh, Andrei Rublev in Moscow, and Dr. Elena Sankova uh, from the state, um, senior researcher and uh, in uh, the state Tretyakov Gallery in Moscow. Uh, all the, um, the Russian team, uh, in fact, the, the art historians, the three art historians, will provide to our um, to us uh, expertise. And will, uh, in fact, they will uh, support uh, uh, researchers from Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, and Serbia in the attribution dating uh, of the of these artifacts. As well, they will participate in the dissemination actions at uh, in the publications of the um, the project. And. Uh, the two, we have as well two historians, uh, uh, the Dr. Uh, Nadezhda Chesnokova from the um, uh, Institute of uh, History, of World History from, of the Russian Academy of Sciences. I see now that uh, there is a small mistake in, in, our, uh, uh, in our site. Uh, she's historian, not historian, uh, not art historian, and uh, Dr. Laura Gerd from the Saint Petersburg Institute of History. So um, they will provide uh, archival sources uh, from uh, concerning uh, the transfer of Russian uh, religious uh, artifacts uh, from um, to the for our database. And uh, Nadezhda Chesnokova will work on the 17th, uh, 18th century and in uh, general in, uh, in the archives of Moscow. And uh, Dr. Laura Gert will work um, in general the 19th century and uh, archives in uh, St. Petersburg. So, um, All this uh, team, uh, all this um, uh, data collection will be uh, uh, concentrated in uh, in the, the in our database. The database is not the true um, the, the true term, but you are. I'm using them. This is the data management model, and. Uh, uh, is we is this model concentrate? Uh, I will say um, entries, uh, primary ent ent entities, and secondary uh, secondary entities concerning the transfer, the objects, and the uh, the written sources. First of all, Raccoon Trans, as, I, um, as I, I said, this is a project relating to early modern and modern history, history of art, social anthropology. So uh, this is a project recording documentation uh, on, cult on cultural heritage monuments. So uh, our collaboration, our, uh, we chose to collaborate with the Center of Cultural Informatics of Fort. Uh, in order to uh, organize and to to analyze all these um, primary sources with a better way, and they propose uh, us this system, the system synthesis, and uh, it we will have an, it, we will have the possibility to interconnect data, and uh, we have the opportunity to reconstruct the temporal spaces, space axis, and dynamics of the project of the process and map the phenomenon of Russian religious art transfer. So uh, the primary, so, uh, primary entities of the database uh, concerns the objects, the transfer and the transfers and the roots of the objects, as well sources, uh, sources, uh, archival sources, uh, published and published uh, bibliography, and as well, very interesting um, part is the 
the relate the source passages. So this the citation, in fact, from the sources, and they uh, give us the possibility to to study in depth the the, the written sources, and this um, the basic. Uh, uh, object of analysis, the, the this is the base of our uh, work, will be completed by secondary relate, uh, uh, sec secondary um, entities co completing with information our um, basic uh, research object. So we will collect data uh, about historical figures related to the project, about collections, uh, about uh, locations, uh, uh, persons, organizations uh, related to this um, uh, um, to this phenomenon, uh, and um, here here you you may see some uh, print screens from the database uh, at this in this stage of her, her um, development, and. Um, uh, Finally, we will have the possibility to to trace the the movement and the uh, the transfer of the objects and the person related uh, and uh, um, pro, 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 provide this on the map uh, on the map uh, in the, on the website of this project of the the project. So uh, to conclude, uh, Raikon Trans is uh, promote. Uh, this innovative inter interdisciplinary and transnational research field of art history in uh, southeastern Euro uh, Europe and produce a methodological bl blueprint for the transnational study of art objects uh, circulation in large regions of Europe, consolidate an international interdisciplinary network of, lead of uh, scholars and educate a new generation of uh, scholars in the field, enforce is historically the contemporary perceptions of Russia in the region of the southeastern uh, Europe and draws public attention to hitherto hit hit unknown and neglected art objects, Sensi sensitizes state authorities and public opinion as well, in hindered Ill and hinder it hinders illicit trade um, with these uh, objects. This is a critical, timely character. Or this is a project with critical and timely character and uh, give us the, the opportunity to perceive better and understand the, um, the uh, developments of, um, in our region now. I think, um, no, that's it. I, I think it's all, it's the same. So, and to finish some, <laughs> some example. So, thank you. Thank you, Giuliana, for this uh, very impressive project. I realized now I knew about it, but it's, uh, I realized all these third party agreements that go back and forth between our legal advisor and uh, uh, the people in uh, Russia, Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia. <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing with these projects. You ha one has to be a manager uh, uh, too of uh, uh, of uh, an incredible uh, bureaucrat bureaucracy. Well, ERC are not as bureaucratic, but still, uh, there is a lot of paperwork that has to be done, <laughs> and uh, definitely communication takes part. One of the uh, it's, it's, it's enormous work. So, thank you very much. This is this is good. Um, uh, so um, we are open to discussion and uh, if you if you go at the bottom of your uh, screen there is reactions okay and um, you can uh, raise your hand or you can write in chat uh, um, any uh, questions you have uh, so you see Christine has raised her hand and we'll think about giving her the word. Uh, <laughs> there is Yanis. Hi, Yanis. 
and uh, we are happy as well um, uh, to have uh, with us uh, uh, Victoria Freda Montmayor. I hope that I say your uh, name uh, <laughs> fine, which is a Russian historian. Uh, so good. So I'll start with uh, Christine, uh, continue with Victoria and then with uh, Nikolaus. Thank you. That was fascinating, Juliana. Um, I have, it's probably best that I go first because my questions are the most rudimentary because <laughs> I'm really a beginner in this whole sphere. Um, and I wondered, um, I know that the answer is different depending on so many variables of chronology, of period and region and Slav versus non-Slav, but I'm wondering if we can, if there's any general answer to what this border between the Ottomans and the Russians, the political border meant in terms of how the relationship was structured between Russian orthodoxy and the orthodoxies or the orthodoxy within Ottoman lands. And, and I'm thinking, is it, is it like a consistently hierarchical relationship in that Russia, because they are the sovereign orthodox power are seen from within the Ottoman Empire by Orthodox Christians as superior? Or is does Russia also venerate, is there a, a reverse hierarchy because the Orthodox within the empire were the first Orthodox, right? So the, the, the original Byzantines, everything. So is that, is there veneration within there? So the hierarchy is also flipped. Does it depend on Slavic versus non I mean, like, how would you start to answer? And, and also, I guess an adjunct to that question is, was there reciprocity in these donations from mm -hmm. Russia to, mm -hmm. Orthodox, to Ottoman lands? Were mm -hmm. they, or was it seen as like, oh, um, the icon painting within Ottoman lands is retrograde and, you know, we wouldn't value what they're producing. We're, we're the ones that are producing the exciting, the best quality icon. So I'm just, mm -hmm. so I have those kinds of questions. And then I have, a, I'll let you answer that. And then I have a specific image I want to show you to see if like, <laughs> okay, because it looks a lot like one of the ones you showed and I'm just really curious. So, okay. First, that general question. Okay. <laughs> um... So it's um, it's not easy to answer. It, it's not yeah. there is not one answer uh, on your question. Right. So uh, you have um, uh, if uh, if you want, I have to answer uh, in um, um, there is a five or six answers regarding the every period. Though, though this is the I think it's the this is the um, uh, because the it was a very um, it's a very um, it's not very dynamic process, but there is a very long process. And mm -hmm. uh, during this process, we have, um, um, I think, uh, two or three very basic uh, transformations uh, of the political and the social and the, uh, of the social um, uh, back background. Um, if you are, if you're starting in 16th century, uh, so um, we have, in fact, the the first donation started with the uh, the recognition of, of the of the patriarch uh, patriarchy of Moscow of Moscovy in uh, by um, uh, by the by Constantinople patriarchate, and uh, so we have uh, donations. Uh, uh, from uh, the from the from the from the from Moscovy, uh, expressing uh, uh, this um, um, related to this uh, uh, fact, this um, this 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 fact, and uh, the, first of all, and the second uh, as well, we have uh, uh, private um, donations related to private. Uh, um, private reasons and uh, uh, pri private um, private devotion, and uh, it was not, so. We have uh, all the time, all the period. We have the private and uh, the official in parallel to to channels the private and the official as well. And um, I think uh, the the change um, very important for this. Um, uh, for this process, is the the 
uh, how to say, the elevation of the Russian church uh, and the Russian patriarchate in the, uh, between the patriarchates of the, um, in the East, in the East uh, Orthodox patriarchates, first the first. And secondly, uh, the, um, the forma uh, and the uh, formation of, um, um, of uh, um, local, uh, of a communication with local religious centers uh, uh, in, uh, in every uh, part of the Orthodox East. It's very interesting that uh, uh, the, the existing literature is uh, more uh, concentrated uh, on the relations with the Russian church, or with, um, uh, with, the, uh, with the patriarchates of the East, uh, with the uh, of the East Patriarchates and about about the uh, Patriarchate of Constantinople, there is more. Is, there is we have not so many um, research researches. In fact, in in the Russian bibliography in general, and um, I think uh, the, the the second uh, step in this um, change is the the reform of the Nikon. So. Uh, so this is the other uh, very important uh, um, fact in the historical um, evolution of uh, the Russian Church: the, the reform of Nikon and the, refor the reformation and this uh, opening to the Greek Church to the Greek Church. So. Uh, and the uh, big and the enormous conflict in uh, in the Russian Church and this uh, um, oppress uh, regarding the old believers and the uh, refusers of the um, reform. Uh, the next stage, I think, the very impo important uh, fact in this. Uh, um, so. The, the period of Alexei uh, Mikhailovich is very studied and very known, etc. The 17th century is very known. This, ex, this, this is the, the, the culmination of the uh, process of, of um, uh, alms, um, of, the, of the dispersion of icons to the uh, Orthodox East. And uh, after that, we have the... Um, I think very important is the 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 the, the uh, liquidation of the uh, patriarchate of and the creation of the synod in uh, Saint Petersburg uh, by Peter the Great, and this is the, the uh, another other um, phase, other period, and other mechanism of uh, control uh, and of uh, implementation of this uh, process, but. The important is that all this, um, nevertheless, we have, it's never stopped this flow of uh, icons and donation to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the region. Uh, I think the, um, from the other part, from the part of the Balkans people, it's very important the, um, the formation of the 19th century, when started the um, from the 18th century, uh, from the Orlov Eka and from the Orlov Revolt, uh, started the national uh, revolts and the movements. And uh, the support of Russia was paid as well by, uh, by icons and by um, uh, supporting the ch church institutions. I think it was very interesting, it, uh, for me it was very interesting to um, this, um, the creation of this uh, um, medal, um, this uh, mm -hmm. the Korea medal. official medal uh, mm -hmm. for the, um, mm, uh, no, I, I think uh, only in Russian I get scheme, uh, for the supporting of the orthodoxy. Uh, it was for a very small period. It was prepared and uh, distributed by uh, the by, in the army of the Catherine. Uh, it was different. It was this uh, medal was uh, different um, uh, quality. It was the, the it, there was a gold that was uh, copper in 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 uh, independence of the. Um, 
of the hierarchical um, uh, <coughs> position of for of the recep of the re recipient of this uh, um, uh, this medal. Uh, so, um, Juliana, we should give some time to the others yeah, to, uh, yeah. to, to uh, yeah. have you finished or you can round up? Yes. And the reciprocity, it was the reciprocity, it was very, it's, there is a very uh, structured reciprocity in this process. Uh -huh. The I clerks, cler cler the Greek clergy went in Moscow everywhere, every time with uh, uh, icons and uh, with relics. It was the very important part of their, the exchange. It was the relics uh, from uh, Mount Athos and uh, from other parts of the, of the, uh, of the Orthodox East. So it was the exchange, and these icons was received at very it was very venerated in the, um, in Moscow, Moscow in um, mm. uh, in Moscow, and was reproduced many times. I think it was the most uh, celeb known example is about Iverska, uh, about the icon of Porta Itisa. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, thank you, Juliana. Uh, thank you. Professor Fred, I, I'm sorry, I don't know if I say your name right. It's just Fred, it's just Fred. It's, it's Fred. fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for letting me come. And I'm so happy <laughs> to participate because I went to Rathimnos, traveled there, and saw some of the beautiful uh, Byzantine uh, churches um, <laughs> quite close to Rathimnos. So very impressive. Um, my question for you is about um, actually follows up on Christine's question. Um, and I'm so happy that you mentioned the Nikonian reforms and the schism mm. of the middle of the 17th century. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, um, could you give us some more examples or speak a little bit more about what exactly happened to these Russian icons in the Balkans mm -hmm. um, at this switching point in the middle of the 17th century? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is, the, how is the conflict or the battle in Russia reflected in the icons that mm -hmm. were donated to the Balkans? And then how much control did the Russian Orthodox Church have over what happened to their icons mm -hmm. once they left Russia? Mm -hmm. And then a follow-up question, could you give mm -hmm. us an example of some of the Russian icons that were not welcome or highly venerated in the Balkans? If you, mm -hmm. you had some pictures, but you kind of skipped yeah. over them fairly quickly, so <laughs> okay. maybe you could um, show us a okay. little bit more. Thank you. Um, so... Um, it's a very interesting uh, subject um, about the old believers' icons in the in the new um, uh, in the new context. Um, I think uh, I, I don't know if I, I may uh, answer of, of all your <laughs> questions. But first of all, um, we have two, uh, three uh, parts. The first of all, uh, actually, I will back from the back. Today, uh, the old believer icons are the, the people could, could not um, distinguish um, the old believer icons from the uh, part of the synodic icons. First of all, um, it for all the people everywhere where I went, it was Russian icons. So, uh, in the in the old time, I think it was the same. Because the uh, for the Orthodox communities in uh, um, in uh, in the Balkans, the, this uh, reform it wasn't uh, it was not it wasn't known. It I I know not for the lit for the um, for the liter literature uh, people, not for the um, um, but for the um, for the for the people it wasn't something absolutely unknown. Uh, I think uh, uh, in this period, after the reform of uh, Nikon, uh, the icons uh, sent to the sent, donated to the um, to the patriarchs to clergy was uh, uh, Nikonians was not uh, old believers. It the icons of old believers was defended that they they doesn't. Um, mm, Mm, how to say uh, circulated? It was uh, absolutely defended. I think um, all believers' icons in the Balkans exist uh, 
uh, have came uh, later uh, do, uh, by, by two ways. The ones is the 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 first is the um, uh, how to say the transferred and uh, the transferred uh, communities of old believers in uh, Bulgaria and Romania in the Danubian region and. Um, uh, in Bulgaria, we have uh, our colleagues from uh, Bulgaria will try to describe the old believers uh, uh, icons in the two villages in Bulgaria. So we have this channel for this uh, kind of art. And the other channel is uh, uh, the trade um, in 19th century when the, mm, the different, I think this the difference between old believers and uh, uh, canonical icons in the mass produced in the mass production uh, has not been so um, so strict, and for the local public, for the local um, customers, in fact, because the, it was uh, a large numbers of icons for um, for trade, uh, it was not uh, important. Uh, I think from the old believers production, very it's a very interesting and very uh, curious for the local people is the uh, the small um, uh, co copper icons, the metal icons. It was it's co absolutely different from uh, there is not uh, uh, such things uh, in uh, in the local. Um, uh, um, um, uh, um, the local um, local production, so it's uh, something uh, uh, very um, very exotic. And um, the other question regarding the uh, the uh, Russian icons refused by and uh, reje rejected by local uh, people. Um, there is. Uh, mm, I found a very interesting uh, um, notice of one monk. Uh, or I don't know, no, I have not uh, in my hands the book, but there is a monk in Mount Athos and uh, he received, it was, uh, I think the, the it was, um, this is a source from uh, uh, 18th century. This, this icon uh, is uh, absolutely, um, Western, it was not is not orthodox icon, so, but it's so beautiful. Uh, so I will uh, I will keep this icon, but I will put the, this icon up uh, up up um, on the um, on the uh, on my, on my uh, room, not for prior, but for embellishing the um, the place. So it's one of the ways to reject these icons. In, uh, in the in the past, uh, in our days, um, there is uh, two ways to reject these icons. The the one the the one of them and the most um, mm, the most common is to um, this icons is not um, for in in museums and it's it's Russians and they give it's a Russian icons and they are put uh, in the in the um, uh, it's a sun. Um, it's invisible. This is invisible icons. It's not uh, object of interest. It's uh, something different, something un ununderstandable, un 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 and uh, um, it's it's very impressive uh, in every museum. In every um, you may found a, a, a large number of Russian icons in the. Um, in the in the uh, how to, to say in the apotheki <laughs> and um, not not studied not described described very many with many um, mistakes etc. Uh, so um, but this is the the modern reaction and uh, uh, in 19th century it was very modern icons and it was very um, attractive and. Uh, it's changing. This is uh, it's not very um, stable. Uh, the, the this this uh, parameter of reception it uh, has different faces. So, as variations. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, thank you, Juliana. This is a great, uh, a lovely array of Russian historians there. So we go from University of Berkeley to University of uh, Southern State, Connecticut, <laughs> uh, to uh, Nikos Krisidis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wanted to echo the comments so far. This is a magnificent kind of effort that you've mounted there with um, um, a lot of collaboration, inter-Balkan collaboration, which in and of itself is a major feat, I have to say. Um, and so um, very quickly, uh, what I wanted to point out is actually it has nothing to do with me, but Mr. Alexandros Papadopoulos has a very interesting note for you about mm -hmm. icons on Evros. Uh, so I you may want to like. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This yes. is magnificent. There is another <laughs> okay. like, you know, place where you need to go. But my quick question is the following. Mm -hmm. Judges by what I know about this project by your presentation today, the bulk of the icons are wooden panel ones that mm -hmm. are in personal collections or in churches is that a fair statement to make uh, yeah in general there is in uh, church collections monastery collections museum collections so, and finally in, in private collections the reason I'm I actually I'm asking this is because mm -hmm. I just also sort of put out a link there of one of the icons that was brought from the Holy Land <laughs> North right the opposite mm -hmm. stuff you know this stuff of course yourself and the reason I'm saying this is because um, I'm wondering you have an enormous amount of items here 10,000 that you are talking about this is magnificent to what extent do you think based on what you know this is guesswork here right do we have, I mean, were these like 60%, 80% based on the source that you have? Because the paper icons, right, didn't survive, right? And uh -huh. so, so I'm wondering here, I know you are aware of this, so I'm not saying that you are not, but what's your hunch? What's your feeling here? How much have we lost, do you think, of other types of icons? I know this is not a very fair question because you've been <laughs> focusing on the ones that you can find. It's just that, you know, I found myself so far eight of these fish icons, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, how many of them were there? You know, kind of thing. What did they do with the fish? Did they eat it first and then like paint the icon? Thank you so much. No, no, no. I think it's a 30% of the real... Um... At least, uh, Amma, uh, because we will, um, I, I will, uh, we will have, we will not, we will not schedule to make a, a global um, de uh, description and uh, um, global description of Russian icons. We have, we have case studies. So, uh, uh, in every, uh, for example, I know. Uh, in uh, Tinos Island, we described about about uh, last uh, last summer about nineteen icons, I icons and eat items, uh, so different. Um, and I'm sure that there is a uh, uh, <laughs> This is the half. And if I may, may I, mm -hmm. Mrs. Moderator, may I sort of just <laughs> add to that? Did the Russians ever get over their sort of feeling of inferiority about not having easily access to Cypress wood for their icons? Mm -hmm. Because in the early modern period, and Yanis actually is mm -hmm. shaking his head, you know, and he's written <laughs> about that. You know, as we all know, in the early modern period, they were like, Cypress wood, we don't have any of it here, you know? Did they ever get over this in the 19th century? Thank you. Okay. So the, this is very interesting uh, about the wood and the materials, and I hope uh, this uh, the the research uh, of Benaki Museum on the woods and uh, the on painting um, on, on painting uh, materials will be very fruitful. As well, uh, our colleagues from Romania, from uh, Alba Iulia Museum, they have described uh, about uh, thirty old believers icons. And the and the wood of these icons, they this is uh, they have some particular particularities, and uh, it's interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Okay, thank you, Juliana. So here is to uh, uh, Yanis Karas, uh, postdoc mm -hmm. at the University of Macedonia at the moment in Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And thank, thank you. It's an amazing project. Um, so thank you for telling us about <laughs> it. Uh, I wanted to ask something which is actually very related to what uh, Nikos just said, uh, but it has to do with, it's not just the icons that are moving, the artists are moving too. And um, they're bringing technology with them. Um, <laughs> so they're bringing exactly, I wanted to talk about the type of wood that is used, also the printing, the type of printing that is being used the silver work, the metal icons, all of these things are aspects of technological mm -hmm. change. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of an input question which can't be mm -hmm. answered briefly, but mm -hmm. does, does the, the technological change move in the same direction yes. as the export of icons? Uh, or is something it, else happening? Uh, it, yes, there is, but it not, it, it not so, um, it's not so important and so uh, massive. You may found different in different regions. We may found, for example, I have now a, an example from uh, Yanena in 19th century. Uh, there is a um, uh, temple um, iconostasis, uh, Russian iconostasis, older icons of the, the iconostasis on Saint Nicholas uh, in Agora. It's Russians, early 19th century in Moscow. So these icons and their technology and the use of the golden leaf was um, co copied by local uh, painters and um, applied in other um, <coughs> uh, icon painting in, in the region. So it, this is the one of the ways. The other ways is the uh, there was a many painters uh, from the from Balkan regions went to study in Kiev and in Moscow and Saint Petersburg in different periods, and they transferred the, their um, their knowledge and uh, incorporated them. Uh, we have in Epirus, in Epirus, uh, we have many examples of this kind in Bulgaria too, and in Serbia. And in Cyprus, but in Cyprus it's very, it's very, it's uh, Leontios, I think, uh, if I, I remember very well, it was it's, um, it's, it's 17th century painters uh, from Cyprus. So it was the other way, the studying the Russian, uh, the Russian icon painting uh, style and techniques, and um, uh, applying this uh, knowledge in the local uh, in the local schools in the local um, milieu. So, but it was for the painting about the metal. I'm not sure because it's what it was. It's uh, more um, more expensive and uh, more difficult to to move. That it need uh, some technical uh, support about this. Not um, so so easy. Okay, thank you. I, I think we, uh, we we usually go uh, up to one and a half hours, but it seems that uh, there's a, a very uh, lively discussion here. Um, as uh, you probably have read, uh, Juliana, there's Alexandros Papadopoulos that says mm -hmm. that there is a lot of uh, um, uh, hidden yes. diamonds of Russian <laughs> icons in northern Evros, okay? <laughs> Uh, yeah. my, my question would also go, but of course we can uh, discuss this, but it's uh, Sjatista was uh, what we call another land uh, mm -hmm. uh, land port, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, has a lot of churches mm -hmm. and a lot of pragmateftaves of merchants. So uh, although you cannot uh, cover a whole of Greece, so you can get another mm. ERC no. uh, to do the rest of the icons. Have yes. you ever gone to Seattle? Uh, from Seattle? No, I never went, but um, I know from there uh, very interesting icons of uh, St. Paras uh, Paraskevi. So there is a uh, small Russian icons of St. Par uh, Paraskevi incorporated in the place uh, of uh, in the frame with the with, with big uh, Greek uh, Vita icon of Saint Paraskevi. So the frame with the Vita is uh, Greek. It's the, of the local painting painter. Uh, for some reasons, the center is um, is uh, uh, 
um, replaced or uh, is in the center is incorporated the, the small Russian icons. So it's mean that in the region they had um, Russian icons. In uh, Castoria, it's uh, it's the big uh, the big collection of. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm <laughs> no. now I'm really. I'm really excited now because what I was not, what I was going to not ask you because we don't have time is now totally <laughs> germane to this because my family is from Seattle. Oh, and the one, wow. <laughs> the, one, the one object they brought with them from the old country when they came in 1913 was this icon that I Aww. had restored. And I wanted to ask you because I always thought it was just a naive, primitive folk yeah. art, whatever. But you showed one of the icons you showed looked a lot like this in reverse. Completely, oh, not Dimitrius. <laughs> I mean, where were you yeah. hiding this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as she was talking, I thought, oh my God, she might actually be able to give me an answer on this. So, is this just is this an imitation of the Russian? Icon I, styles no, that you talked about? No, no, it's not Russian. No, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not. <laughs> this is just. So no, it's just a. It's just a primitive icon from Seattle. Yeah, is that it? Okay. <laughs> okay. But good. it must be from the mid 19th century at least, because they it was already a family Later. heirloom when they left in 1913, right? So. No, no later. Late I think it's later. Oh anyway, God! This is, this is uh, but the main the main thing is that I'm very excited. You are from Tiarista. Tiarista <laughs> was the center of the Balkans, one of the center poles of the of mm. of, of, of the Balkan roads. You know, and uh, it, it's an amazing place that uh, really needs to be uh, uh, studied. Uh, we have Tiarista. to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So anyway, uh, it is uh, great to have uh, uh, everybody here. Thank you very much, uh, Juliana, for presenting this uh, lovely project and uh, uh, Christine for always being there and uh, 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 sharing this uh, very nice experience of this seminar and uh, everybody else for listening and participating. You have many regards, uh, Juliana, as well, from Poppy's Fake and I give we'll listen oh. to all the lecture uh, uh, with uh, little Alkis next to uh, <laughs> oh. uh, Nikos gives the, uh, the, the real uh, uh, evidence about your icon, uh, Christine. It is San Dimitrios killing the COVID virus. <laughs> And, That's right. <laughs> and uh, with this, I think I shall say goodbye to everybody and thank you very much and see you in the next uh, uh, meeting, which will be, I think it's June. I didn't see. Uh... Uh, no, September, I think, actually. Oh, no? September. No, no. That, that's yes. the last of this academic year, right? And with Rahab yeah. Yanni, uh, Yanni Spiropulo in September. Uh, so, yes. Thank bye you. Bye Thank you everybody. so much. Thank, Thank you, Juliana. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.